Today I'm going to explain to you cranial sacral therapy from the very base level. I'm going to explain to you how it functions. I'm going to explain to you the structure, the anatomy of it. So you're going to get a different idea about how it works, why it's important, and the beauty of it all as well. So I'm going to start by letting you know that the cranial system is the dural tube, which is a membrane that is inside of the skull. It runs inside of the, uh, the vault, is what it's oftentimes called, and it attaches to different areas of, this, of these different bones. The bones are different colors, they're different bones. The name of them are different. And you can see that there's quite a few of them. This is part of the cranial system, the cranial sacral system. It's the tube that runs around the brain and down the spinal cord all the way to the sacrum. So it's running from the skull down to the sacrum. Inside this tube that you can see, this is the dural tube, that's where the cerebrospinal fluid will flow. The cerebrospinal fluid is pumped in a semi-hydraulic system that allows an expansion and contraction of the cranial of the, of the dural tube and it, with that you can feel this cranial rhythm everywhere on the body. So let me just explain to you a little bit about how that works on the different bones of the head. Starting here with the uh, sphenoid bone, when we're working with the bones, um, this is an important piece to understand, is the sphenoid bone is this little joint right here, which you find where the, this is purple and yellow, where that comes together. That is considered the fulcrum of the body, and that's on the inside of the, of the vault. But that's the fulcrum of the body, that's the balance point of the body. This, these two joints come together with just a little bit of cartilage, so it's very easy to knock this off of the kilter. It can do a torque, it can do a side bend, it can shear to the side or the other side, it can shear forward or backward, um, and it can also be compressed. And all that has to do with different ways that we might be injured to the head. Cranial sacral therapy was originally designed for head and spinal trauma, so that's why this bone is so important to understand. It's the red bone meeting the blue in this particular skull. So when the, when the joint is out of commission, when it's a little bit out of alignment, what that does to the rest of the body, so let's say it's just in a torque, so here you are with the spine um, coming out of this, this area of the occiput and then the sphenoid bone which is placed here. So if you can keep that in mind of how the skull is placed there and then you consider the different ways of having head trauma. Perhaps you get hit from the side. That would take this bone sideways off of the base. If you got hit from the front side, you might be torquing it. If you got hit on top of the head, you'd be compressing it. And then if you get thrown around a bit, the bone is going to be making all kinds of different movements, all kinds of different patterns in all of those off the center directions. And the membrane underneath and around that and down the tube is going to be following and twisting with all of that action going there. That is one reason that people get stiff and they can't really quite find how to straighten it out and undo it because it's so wound up from the more of a membrane level. At least that's what I've discovered from having my hands on so many people and how much relaxation they get after they get the bones of the head re, um, re situated. Um, one person in India that I worked on had a very, very stiff neck. I'm just going to share this story with you. And she went to the physical therapist after she had a work done with me and she started to move her head back and forth and the physical therapist was just saying, don't do that, don't do that, you can't do that. But her neck was fine and it was all because we were able to unwind that tube, straighten out this joint, and so the, so the membrane can be in alignment with all of the bones on top of the head. So there's a rhythm that we'll be talking about uh, in the future 
but when the sphenoid bone is off of balance, what that creates is it creates all of the bones inside of the head to have to be out of balance as well. So you can, this bone isn't going to move, but just take a look at the yellow bone and the purple bone where they meet here. And then imagine getting hit from the side. You're going to shear it over. You're going to shear that bone horizontally. What's that going to do to the rest of the bone structure? What's that going to do to the rhythm and the way that the bones fit together like a piece, uh, like a puzzle? It's really like a puzzle. Uh, sometimes when I have my hands on it, it feels like tectonic plates are shifting and you can feel it all the way down the body. Now, when you go down to the other end of the body, which is the sacrum, this tube is connecting it and the sacrum is going to be, it's right here. And so its placement is like so. Sphenobasilar junction is off the balance. The sacrum has to be off of its balance as well, because if it's not, then you're not going to be able to stand up straight. You're not going to be able to really even stand up um, on two feet if it's really far out. Because it's going to have to balance the spine. It's like stacking blocks of children's blocks. One place gets off. It's, it's going to be off at the start, which that's really kind of the that's the fulcrum, so it's really like the base, but even though this is down here, which is considered the base, this gets off at the top. This is going to have to realign to match that in order to keep you going. So all along the way, you're going to have a little bit of subluxation, um, at, a, at, at least at a membrane level. That's why it's important to go in and get the membrane worked before you probably get it aligned with a chiropractor because you're going to have the chiropractic work be more effective because you have the underlying tissue more corrected. So that where it is attached, it's attached to the, to the spine, the dural tube is attached to the spine in various locations, that is going to pull and make tight the bones. So when the chiropractor is adjusting the bones, which is an important modality, it, it, when it's, it's used properly, it's very important. However, working together with the cranial system and then working with the, the bone, the hard part of, the, of it, to align that at a bigger level, you're going to have much more efficient work done. It's important to understand that a lot of different modalities can work with each other very well. My perception is, is that the cranial sacral system is really the core of it all, though, because it is the pretty core part of the body. So the other part I wanted to show you is just what's happening inside of the head with a membrane. There's, let me pull this off. Um, we have this, which is representing the division of the brain. There's the upper part and and down below, and this is where it goes into the spinal column, the cord itself. This top part here that's, that's curved is called the tentorium, and the top part of the horizontal is the uh, fox cerebri, and fox cerebelli is the bottom part. And all your little organs of the brain are inside of here, and we can talk about that more at another time, but this is a membrane that is worked when you do the cranial sacral therapy. This is the membrane primarily that you're uh, correcting because this is what will get all twisted. And as you see, this is kind of hard to see because it's not colored, but when it's placed in here, you can see where it's attaching to the bone. It's running along the temporal bone, as you can see. It's harder to see, I know, but here's the temporal bone. It doesn't really fit in here. But there's kind of like it is. The pituitary sits right there. So if the temporal bone is being twisted, of course, this is twisted. They're all being twisted. So you can see the relationship between this membrane and the way that it's attaching to the different bones, because it's attaching everywhere. It's got a piece of it's got a piece of membrane touching every bone. And then it's running down the spinal cord. And you can see the importance now of the cranial system and why we should keep it in really good alignment. 
because the cranial system is one that you cannot palpate. You can't just go in there and straighten it out yourself. The body has got to do it, and that's why you work the system with five grams of pressure and work with the rhythm, because when the rhythm is expanding, it's gonna hit the, the hands with five grams, the weight of a nickel, and it's gonna not be able to go into the abnormal pattern. It will move itself back into the proper pattern. And after just a few short sessions, a lot of things can be corrected. Um, so if it's strictly structural, if it's functional as well, that takes a little more time, there's more to it. But this is why I see people with really bad sciatica, I see people with blown discs out, I see people with pretty bad back pain, and yet once that body is allowed to align itself, I don't see them hardly ever unless they happen to fall or bump their head or do something, they run back in and get corrected right away because they feel so out of alignment. And that's the beauty of it is that that will hold as much as possible. So if you get injured, get cranial work done. If you need chiropractic work done, if you need physical therapy, get that done. But look at it as a whole unit. That's the really important thing we got to start to understand about knowing who we are. We have to look at ourselves as a whole being, starting from the deepest parts of our inside out. There you have it. Thank you so much. And there's more to come. So next, what I want to share with you in the next video is about the rhythm. And the rhythm comes from the action of this really important area of the, of the body, the sphenobasilar junction, sphenoid, sphenol, the base of the occiput, basilar, sphenobasilar junction, because this is the pump right here. This moves back and forth, and that's what pumps the cerebrospinal fluid up and down your vertebrae inside of the core of your